Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC hobby. Welcome to another exciting edition of What's in This Box. And today I've got a rather large box to open. Uh, I think we can probably guess what might be in here. Probably a few other items as well. Sorry, there's no prizes for guessing correctly, but let's have a look inside anyway, okay? Well, this is definitely a special episode for a couple of reasons. A, uh, such a nice large box to open and uh, find out what's inside. Also, because this is the first video that I am shooting with my new GoPro 7 Black. Um, definitely get a better field of view, that's for sure. Um, sorry, things are kind of askew and you're kind of looking over my shoulder. Um, I've got to work on camera placement a bit, but this is what we've got now kind of worried about this because even though it's marked fragile there's a really big divot in the box so let's see if uh if the contents survive and what the best way to open this is going to be okay looks like it's folded this way Everything looks like it's well packed. And uh, this box, this order came from soaringusa.com. They've got a very nice selection of gliders, powered and non powered, as and various parts and accessories. Okay, it did ding the box. Let's see. Um, let's see, uh, see if I can get this at an angle where you can see. They definitely put every effort into uh, making this as secure as possible. As you can see, that looks like there's a, a three quarter inch by one and a half inch uh, piece of uh, pine stock in here, the length of the box to provide stiffening and try to keep this from getting crushed or bent. Apparently you can't protect it from getting a hole poked in it. Good old FedEx, not my favorite carrier. Oh, and uh, before I open it, just uh, show you what's in here. Uh, this is the Avia 2.5. Um, it's made by Top Model, and it's a, uh, I guess I would call it an entry level um, F5J glider, uh, which is a uh, Fairly a limited class, up to four meters, electric powered gliders. Now let's, let's identify where that hole, okay, the hole, fortunately, was right here, where all this bubble wrap was. So I don't think we're gonna find any damage. Okay, fuselage looks good. 
Um, you want to look down the line of your fuselages uh, from, from the tail forward, kind of sight down it like an arrow, and just look for twists. And it looks straight. Sorry about that. Uh, the camera must be set to um, uh, short video clip mode. I'll have to change that. Let me continue uh, just in case you missed anything. There's a carbon toe or a strap uh, down either side of the fuselage that's molded in uh, to provide strength. None of the holes are pre-drilled for wing or tail. Just slide that back in. Okay, the dogs are going off. Okay, this is one of the items I ordered with the airplane. Uh, this is a, a cam altitude sensor. Uh, these are required for uh, ALES uh, glider competitions. We have the uh, printed manual. Wing sticker. There's a hardware package attached to the side of the box. I'm just going to leave that where it is for right now. Uh, here we have the V-tail sections. Definitely uh, like the way everything is packaged. Um, as you can see, these are a, uh, a build-up uh, construction. Uh, there's a carbon fiber leading edge and a carbon fiber spar. Looks like they are pre-hinged, uh, but I can't say for sure. They may not be. They are taped in place at the moment. Pull this. Okay, they have some uh, mounting blocks. Um, these are for... Uh, mounting the servos into the wing. Um, and that would be for a standard servo. I've got flat wing servos I plan to use on this, so I may be making my own mounting blocks. Uh, these are the little aerodynamic covers uh, that cover the linkage. And here we have wing half number one. topmodels.com sticker and here we have wing section number two and they're all pre-built large carbon spars carbon leading edge big surfaces for ailerons and flaps let's go ahead and have a look in here Okay, uh, there's our wing spar, control rods for ailerons and flaps, servo tape, so the uh, servos are probably not taped, obviously. Um, so we got some uh, metal hardware uh, for mounting the tail section and possibly for mounting the wing. Um, we have servo tray and uh, the fiberglass firewall. I may go with a metal firewall since this isn't already glued in. Um, we'll talk about that later. And uh, sorted clevises and other little hardware items. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what else was in the package. Now these were not in this box, they were in the large box that this came in. Let's 
get in here carefully. Damn sure thing. Uh, this is the uh, the flight pack for a, another airplane that um, just came in this package. I ordered it along with this. And this is the, uh, the motor that I'm going to be using. It's a, uh, it's a New Motors 707 with a 4.4 to 1 gearbox. As you can see, that's a, a very small drive system. It's extremely light. Um, I'll let you know just how light. Um, I opted to go with uh, with this drive system for this big glider, if you can believe it. Um, it uh, it's supposed to turn a 12 and a half, uh, eight pitch prop or or potentially larger. Um, and uh, draws enough amperage that I went with a, um, uh, a 40 amp uh, electric speed control for this. Um, got some very anemic wiring. I'm almost uh, surprised at how how incredibly small this is. Um, let's see. Uh, do I have anything to compare it to? Well, okay. Here's an old style brushed motor with a gear reduction system that's for a pretty good sized airplane but i mean you know even though this is made for a larger plane um in fact this has more wingspan than the plane this is for this is for a, a cub type uh aircraft of about oh say 60 inch wingspan uh porterfield collegiate very old uh airplane that i had in storage for a few decades and finally drug out um, I bought it uh, used and a bunch of uh, stuff was missing from the kit, uh, but I decided to take it out and throw it together anyway. I may not even use that motor. I may just go with a nice outrunner uh, and save a lot of weight and everything else. That thing weighs a ton. This thing is miniature. Um, Okay, anyway, let's just move on. Um, I don't have any other motors handy to compare this to, but it is ridiculously small. I mean, um, you can just see how this fits in the palm of the hand. Um, it is supposed to be a very light option uh, compared to doing a straight out runner. This is an in runner motor with a gearbox. If I was running a straight out runner, uh, the motor would probably be oh, about twice the size. Um, and uh, probably also about double the weight. Uh, so I may actually need to add ballast to the front of this. I'm hoping not. Uh, but the idea is to keep this as light as possible for F5J competition. And I've never done F5J competition. This is all new to me. So I'm going to document everything for you. And if, uh, if you're curious about getting into uh, glider competition, I will have many videos all about it and uh, this is a more expensive motor it's uh, I believe it was around hundred and ten dollars I could have gone with a cheaper motor I certainly could have gone with just a straight-up outrunner and you know no gearbox probably would have been in the realm of about sixty seventy dollars if I got a high quality one if I just went with uh, something inexpensive from Hobby King. It probably would have been under $25 or $30. But I wanted to go for weight uh, because it is for competition, even though it's my first one. Very inexpensive glider. It's under $300, mostly assembled. Um, so I, I decided to uh, go with the radio. Now, a rule of thumb when you're building aircraft is you equip the plane to the value of the plane. Okay, uh, this is not some, you know, carbon fiber piece of artwork uh, with a hollow wing that costs two thousand dollars, and so uh, putting a two hundred fifty dollar drive system in it, not worth it. Um, uh, putting you know hundred dollar a piece servos, not the way to go. Um, now I'm not going complete bargain basement on the servos. I'm definitely trying to pick stuff that, you know, is going to have enough torque for the job. Um, and, uh, 
the speed to handle it and I'm probably going to go with a, a different servo for the flap than for the uh, aileron because the flap is going to need more power to be able to drag those flaps to an almost uh, 90 degree position uh, for good braking. So anyway, I'll discuss more about that down the road. And here we have some batteries. Uh, these are uh, made by Tattoo, tattoo-world.com. And uh, I've heard of uh, more than a couple people using these for, uh, for glider competition. These are probably a little larger than I'll actually use at events. And even these are extremely small. Um, I bought these for, uh, for practicing. It's a 1300 milliamp battery. It's very, very light. Um, again, you know, hoping I don't need to put ballast up front, hoping that the gear and placement of the gear uh, when I do the build is going to set the glider up so that I don't need to uh, to add much ballast um, or you know much weight to balance it ballast is another factor ballast is for you know heavy wind days things like that where you need to get the glider to penetrate more that's a totally different thing than getting the airplane to balance for its center of gravity um, now for events I'll probably be using an 800 milliamp battery because for altitude limited electronic sailplanes, ALES, um, F5J competitions, you're basically turning on the motor, climbing to altitude, um, I believe it's 200 meters or 30 seconds of motor runtime, whichever comes first. And that's what the altimeter um, lockout is for, that uh, cam device that I showed you. Um, and, uh, so depending, uh, sometimes it's 150 meters, uh, it depends on the event and, um, and flight conditions. So, uh, since I don't, since I'm not going to be flying up and down and up and down and up and down, uh, I don't need as big a battery for competition. So, uh, even though this is already an incredibly light battery, this is something I'm going to use for just practicing weekend flying. Uh, and I'll let you know, uh, when I get this up how many um how many runs i get out of it i've also got an uh, altimeter uh, with telemetry uh, for the new uh, dx8 um, radio that i bought and uh, so i'll go over that in another video and uh, talk about how that gets set up how it's used and its benefits i'll go ahead and pack this up in another minute so, I think I've covered everything that was in here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, maybe you learned a thing or two. Please click like. Um, please subscribe. Uh, and if you subscribe, please click the little bell icon. If you can, do all three of those for me. That would really help me uh, keep this channel going. And... Um, if you click the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. I'm going to try to do this on a, on a regular basis. That's my goal. And if, if my audience helps me, I will be able to do that more effectively.